One of US Navy's most dangerous evolutions is underway replenishment because you're potentially just 30 seconds away from a collision and it's even more tricky during a double replenishment. But why these ships sail side by side during this procedure as opposed to one ship behind the other? And the reason they don't just stop before replenishing is not what you think. Underway replenishment or unrep is a broad term applied to all methods of transferring fuel, munitions, supplies, and personnel from one ship to another while the vessels are underway. The rest of the world call it replenishment at sea, but we'll use the US Navy term underway replenishment. UNREP allows ships to remain at sea for prolonged periods of time, especially in areas of the world where friendly resupply ports are not available. Generally speaking, there are two methods of UNREP. In the first method, the supply ship and the receiving ship are connected and the transfers are done using those connections. This is called alongside connected replenishment or CONREP. In the second method, the ships are not connected. Instead, helicopters are used to transfer the cargo from the supply ship to the receiving ship. This method is consequently called vertical replenishment or vertrep. But these two methods serve different purposes. Vertical replenishment is pretty much concerned with delivering cargo and not fuel, and the weight of each load is typically limited to 4,000 pounds per delivery. Vertrep helicopters are equipped with a cargo hook from which a load is suspended. When transferring munitions, special ordnance slings are hooked up by the personnel on the supply ship to the helicopter. For non-sensitive cargo, conventional cargo nets are used. Once the helicopter reaches the receiving ship, it slowly hovers and lowers the cargo onto the deck, and the load is then manually released by a helicopter crewman. Even though multiple helicopters could be transferring the cargo from the supply ship, the overall transfer rate is lower compared to connected replenishment. Vertical replenishment is quite common and while logistically simpler than connected replenishment, it is relatively dangerous as it involves risks to the loading personnel due to the helicopter and the load and also potential risks associated with the helicopter due to FOD. One upside for Vertrep is that the supply ship could remain at a safe distance from the receiving ship. As you'll see momentarily, this is not the case for connected replenishment. Comparatively, connected replenishment or CONREP is logistically a lot more complicated than Vertrep. After all, we're talking about two massive ships steaming side by side at a speed of 12 to 14 knots tethered with multiple steel cables while they're less than 200 feet apart. And they'll be moving along in that situation for hours while transferring fuel and cargo. And in case of replenishing aircraft carriers, it could take days. So by now, it should be absolutely clear that a successful connected replenishment requires a lot of coordination between the two ships. And how is that coordination done? using flags. There are 26 flags representing the international code words connected to the letters of the alphabet, such as Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and so on. Each flag means something specific, and they can be used individually or combined together. Even though communication over radio may be used, it is possible to conduct a complete replenishment only using flag hoist signals. In fact, ships often practice these silent replenishments and the conning officer must recognize and understand the flag signals associated with them. We won't get into what all the flags mean, but as an example, this flag is called Romeo, which indicates readiness. When the supply ship is ready to begin, they hoist the Romeo flag which signals the receiving ship to get closer. Typically, the supply vessel is designated as the guide ship 
which sets the course and speed of travel during the replenishment process. The other vessel is designated as the approach ship. The goal of the approach ship is to come alongside the guide ship with sending and receiving stations aligned at a lateral separation of about 160 feet and then maintain that station throughout the replenishment. As soon as the approach ship reaches an adequate position, a shot line is sent over, which may require multiple attempts from the gunner since both vessels are moving and the apparent wind needs to be taken into consideration. That shot line is used to pull in the phone and distance line, or PND line, which is marked every 20 feet by a flag. Once the PND line is across, the job of maintaining proper separation becomes much easier using the flags that indicate the distance between the ships. The PND line also provides for sound-powered bridge-to-bridge communications. The lines needed to set up the transfer rig are similarly pulled across. When fueling at sea, typically a stream rig is utilized. STREAM stands for Standard Tensioned Replenishment Alongside Method, which basically means a tensioned span wire is suspended between the two ships. Then a series of hose saddles are attached to the span wire by trolleys. The actual transfer hose is then suspended in between the saddles, which carry the weight of the hose. Personnel on the receiving ship haul in the hose until the probe latches onto the receiving end. And we're in business. Who says you can't have hose on a Navy ship? Because of the relative position of the ships, it is common for the larger ships to set up multiple transfer rigs, allowing for faster transfer or the transfer of multiple types of stores. Each pallet can carry up to 8,700 pounds of cargo which is twice as much as what helicopters can deliver during vertical replenishment. Anything from munitions to produce can be brought on board. You know, it's true what they say. To be on a warship, you need to have a pair. We should also note that nearly all replenishment ships are set up to service two receivers at once, with one being replenished on each side. This is referred to as double underway replenishment. Most ships can receive replenishment on either side, that is except for U.S. Navy's aircraft carriers. The island on aircraft carriers is located on the starboard side, and that's the only side that carriers can be replenished from. Throughout the replenishment process, flags and signs are used to communicate between the ships, but the personnel also wear helmets with different colors. Each color identifies the role of that person as it relates to the replenishment process. White means officer. White with green cross, safety officer. White with red cross, corpsman. Yellow, rig captain. Green, signalman. Red, line throwing gunner. Brown, winch operator. Purple, winch watcher or repairman. Blue, line handler. Orange, checker or supply personnel, and finally gray means all other. There is research about urine being used as a clean source of energy, but this is just a fuel sample, examined for possible contamination, and once replenishment is completed, the fuel hose is released and all other cables and connections are hauled back onto the ships. Following successful completion of replenishment, it is customary for many U.S. Navy ships to play a signature tune over their PA system as they break away from the supply vessel. In the Royal Australian Navy, ships fly a special flag during the replenishment operation. For example, the flag of A-League teams associated with the city that the ship is named after. The earliest type of replenishment is astern fueling, where the receiving ship follows directly behind the supply ship. And this is much safer, as a slight error in the course of the ships will not result in a collision. But astern fueling has limitations. It can only transfer fuel, not cargo, and can only supply one ship at a time. 
That said, it does have a place in the replenishment plan, generally limited to refueling convoy escorts. Warships can be quite vulnerable during replenishment, so the sooner the transfer is completed, the better. The ships keep moving at 12 to 14 knots in order to lessen the relative motion due to waves, which allows for better control of the ships. But this is a risky operation. In rough weather, man overboard most likely will result in fatality. Any internal or external problem to one or more of the ships could demand an emergency breakaway. Accidents can be extremely dangerous. And yet, alongside connected replenishment, continues to be the US Navy's one-stop shop to deliver all types of supply as quickly as possible.